Now to continue the discussion of Aretha Franklin's life and legacy, Camilla Forbes, executive producer at the Apollo Theater here in New York, where the Queen of Soul performed a number of times during her career. Roland Martin, senior analyst with the Tom Joyner Morning Show, and joining me on the phone, singer and actress Mavis Staples and jazz legend Herbie Hancock. Welcome to all of you. Mavis, Glad let's start here. with you. Uh, what an influence uh, Aretha Franklin has been on the, the world of music in, in gospel, in R&B, in soul, in pop. Uh, even in opera for a little while. Uh, how, how do we put her into context? She's, she's a hard woman to put into context because as she just said in that uh, obituary, she wants to be remembered for everything. <laughs> and she will be. She will be. Aretha, she did it all. You know, and she, her, life was, her life was very full of, uh, and, and she just received all of the, the beautiful accolades that she deserved. You know, you, you just... It, she was just global and and royalty beyond royalty, you know. So Aretha, I tell you, I'm I'm just blessed and grateful to have known her. Yeah, I still know her, you know. Um, uh, we met when back in the '60s. I think I was 18. Aretha was 15. Wow. And we sang at the forum, uh, a gospel gospel show was at the forum and she came over to me and she said I'm Aretha I said I, said, I know who you are you Aretha she, she had recorded the song Never Grow Old and everyone was just enthused over her she was a young girl but she had it all then Wow. You know, she played the piano. She was uh, uh, just just great on the piano. And and uh, then as time moved on, she she loved Sam Cooke, and she wanted to sing what Sam was singing. Yep. And she went and on. She and she was still gospel, started. really, at the time, and Sam was singing, you know, more mainstream stuff. Right, right. And uh, but she moved on and uh, got on the same level with Sam singing. The, well, she started with some jazz. Yeah. She would do things with King Curtis and the Soul Serenade, you know. But um, she she couldn't stay there. She had to she had to stretch out. And when she stretched out, she yeah. stretched out. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, we're just showing some pictures of the Apollo there. Uh, Camilla, uh, she's the Queen of Soul, undisputed queen of, queen of Soul. She's also the Queen of the Apollo. That's right. Talk to me yeah. about her history, uh, Camilla, at the at the Apollo. So, you know, she's performed at the Apollo dozens of times. Yeah. Um, and she first graced the stages in the early 60s, right? When no one really knew her name. Um, um, uh, but then, you know, Aretha, being who Aretha is, came back in 1971 to do a famed She's Home concert. And that's when she really kind of had a really big explosion um, and came home back to the Apollo. And, you know, at the Apollo, we call her, you know, the queen of the Apollo um, because of what she represents. You know, she represents the soul of the American people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's who For we are. For 50 years, this woman's been performing. Years. She has all, all of these changes in America over that time. That's right. And, and, and she has adapted to that. She was a feminist icon. She was a civil rights supporter. And she was an adapting and evolving musician the whole time. That's right. And continually evolving, yeah. right, yeah. as you yeah. had pointed out. And, um, and, and, and and that's a real evolution of a musician, but of a true artist, yeah. um, with always her ears to the ground um, and always ready to serve and serve the people. And I think people responded to her generosity in the world, yeah. um, which is why I think we're seeing all of this outpouring today. It's unbelievable. Herbie Hancock, what's your, what are your thoughts on the passing of Aretha Franklin? Well, first of all, let me tell you, when I, when I first heard about Aretha, it was back in the mid-60s when I was a sideman with Miles Davis. And we, I was living in New York at the time, and we had to, we were on tour, and we were playing, had to play in uh, Los Angeles at a place that had been a kabuki theater uh, when that neighborhood had been more Japanese. But uh, anyway, the opening act for us was, I was told, a funky jazz player, jazz piano player who also sings, and her name was <laughs> Aretha Franklin. So I went down early. Uh, to the club to hear her. I wanted to, you know, hear her playing funky piano. And she played great, but when she sang, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and she sang so incredibly well 
that that night I actually got the flu. <laughs> wow. I mean, Harvey, she's been incredible. You talk about the early 60s. You, you had that. You've told me that. Mavis has told me that. Carol King told me that earlier today. But if you heard her in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, in the 2000s and teens, you still heard that amazing voice. I remember uh, Roland Martin uh, at, at the Kennedy Center Honors. Uh, you know, this is a woman who, in, into her fifth decade of performing, was sounded better than anybody else has ever sounded. I mean, uh, John Legend called her one of the greatest vocalists of all time. You heard her singing something really interesting, I guess, at a birthday party, Roland? Yeah, 2014, I was invited to a birthday party, and toward the end, uh, the party was almost over, and then Aretha then grabs the microphone and the pen, and she starts scatting. Uh, and so I had a Canon PowerShot camera, and I said, oh, I got to get this. Let's, and let's so play I, a little bit of it, Roland. Yeah, let's yeah. play a little bit. <laughs> something else. Uh, a little earlier I was talking to uh, Reverend Al and uh, he was talking about her contribution to civil rights. Uh, and and Roland, you got you still there, Roland? Yeah, I'm here. I'm and, here. And he was saying, you know, there was one point in his life where he needed money for something he was involved in, uh, you know, uh, and, and he was he was close to broke and she sent some money to the cause and he didn't want to cash the check because the check was signed by Aretha Franklin. Right, right. Uh, and Aretha, I think, has told him at some point, you know, you could take a photocopy of the check and then put the check in the bank. But he was yeah, saying, cash I needed that money so badly and I framed the check because it was it was really uh, such a big deal but here's the point i'm trying to make is she said she she didn't want to lead marches and things like that but she had causes that she supported and she supported them financially through her life she had, look dr king said this to diane carroll and sydney Poitier. look you do what you do others will be out here marching and she understood that as well and so she supported many different initiatives she was a very conscious woman. She loved watching news. She listened to talk radio. Uh, when she would call me, we would talk about politics, and uh, we would talk about the last, one of the last conversations we had, she talked about the direction of this country we're going in with Donald Trump as president. Uh, we had a great conversation uh, Christmas. Uh, my family, we were making gumbo, and I sent her the video, and, and when she, we talked to her, we were talking about that, and my last conversation with her was in March. Uh, and, and look, so that's the kind of woman that she was, but, but she also, look, she was the queen uh, in 2000 2015, when she performed at the White House alley uh, during the rehearsal, she told them to turn the AC off in the East Room because she did not like air. And then they, now mind you, it's hot outside. Yeah, they had to go. They had to go find somebody to light a fireplace <laughs> in the White House to keep her warm. To, be, to keep it warm. And then, when the, before the gospel program started, Obama took forever and he was taking pictures coming in. And after the program, she said, look, I don't know what's taking him so long. I wasn't trying to stay in there with all that AC on. He need to hurry up. You know, <laughs> and so I, I cracked up laughing and she, you know, but again, I mean, but here's the piece. She was the queen. But, and everybody called her the queen. And what did you do with the queen? You bow down so take to the a queen. Look, take a look at her in this, in this church hat at the inauguration. Mavis, uh, Reverend Al was also telling a story like Joe Roland was about uh, Aretha Franklin at the White House getting her hair done and saying to Reverend Al, isn't this something? I'm sitting here getting my hair done in the White House where there's a black president. And, and, and there's something to be said for that because this woman, uh, when she was there in this picture that we're looking at right now at the inauguration singing, this is some piece of her life, having started to perform nearly 50 years earlier to be a, a, a black woman sitting at the inauguration of the singing at the inauguration of a black president. Mavis? Yeah. Yes, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sorry. Um, that, that is, that the hat, that any, any given Sunday, you would see 
a hat like that sitting in the pews, sitting at church. But uh, that, uh, I know Aretha is the only one who could pull that off. It's unbelievable. Of that. The, yeah, she's the only one. The queen, queenie. That's what I call the queenie. <laughs> he is. She absolutely is. Thanks to all of you for helping us remember uh, Aretha Franklin, Camilla Forbes, uh, Roland Martin, Mavis Staples, and Appreciate Herbie it. Hancock. Thank you Thanks, to all Allie. of you. The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, 76 years old.